Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to welcome you to our uh, service here this morning in Philippi. If you're visiting with us, we certainly welcome you here. And we hope that you can come back uh, each and every chance that you get. Um, if you're visiting, our bathroom's over in the corner over here. Uh, offering box is back here in this corner. The toddler classroom is over here for the kids. And uh, just uh, feel free. There's water and stuff back there and, and all if you need something during the service. God so loved. That's our first song.
Just uh, so thankful for this beautiful day and the opportunity to come and worship uh, your name, Lord, and all that you do for us every day. Um, Lord, be with um, be with us as we gather today. Help us to just be able to um, listen and take to heart everything that we um, hear and everything that we see and do, Lord. Um, please be with all the ones that couldn't be here for whatever reason, Lord, you know, and just um, help heal everyone that is having any problems, pain, or suffering that's going on, Lord. Um, we just thank you for the love that you give us that we don't have to fear, that we can um, just know that you're there with us no matter what. Thank you for um, this church and all that it does for the community. And Lord, just help us to keep building on that and just be an outreach and a, a special place for people when they need us, Lord. Um, Lord, we just uh, continue just to thank you. We thank you for all your love, all your mercy, and all your grace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our communion uh, song of power. <coughs> sought out people who had just recently got over the illness. During the blood, due to the blood that they had, since they had the antibodies build up, it could possibly save the lives of so many people who were dealing with the virus. The lone purpose for blood is to sustain life. Donating blood brings healing. It can lead to lives being saved. There's power in the blood. If you look in the Bible, there's many times God makes statements about blood having power. 
He personified blood when rebuking Cain after Abel's murder. He said, your brother's blood cries out to me in Genesis 4.10. After the flood, God instructed Noah, only you shall eat of the flesh, but not the blood in Genesis 9.4. God reminded Moses, the life of a creature is in the blood. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life in Leviticus 17.11. And in this way, God said in the Old Testament that the sacrifice of blood would be the holy way. The blood of bulls and goats were used to purify altars to make atonement for the sins of God's people. God instituted the system because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. In Hebrews 9.22, the sacrifice of blood provides forgiveness. There's power in the blood. But scripture also said, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins in Hebrews 10.4. So this type of atonement was not complete. There needed to be a lamb. There needed to be a spotless and sinless creature that would give their sacrifice of their life to save us. The blood of Jesus Christ was freely offered and given. Not only does it sustain life, it pays the penalty for the sins and brings on new life for all of us. The gift of Jesus' blood gives eternal life because there's great power in the precious blood of the Lamb. As we gather around the Lord's table, let's remember that he gave his life, gave his blood, and gave us power. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. I ask that you help us all be able to pay attention and focus during the lesson, Lord. Help us take away something from this church. Thank you for just letting us be here, Lord. Continue to watch over us and bless us. Amen. So if you have your communion cup, open the first flap and take of the bread. Next, the juice. It's uh, always good to have friends in the ministry that have been spreading uh, the Word of God for a long time, and I consider Mr. Dennis to be a really good friend of mine, and I know Jenny's. Uh, he's a graduate from Roanoke Bible College, back when it was Roanoke, yeah. and uh, that's where he and Jenny met. They were in classes together, and I got to know him after I got to know Jenny. But a uh, wonderful man here. Spent most of his adult life preaching God's Word, and he's still doing it right now. He just ain't doing it full time. Uh, he's babysitting Tim Turner up in Winterford. <laughs> Y'all know Tim Turner. But uh, it's always good to see him and have him come back. So Mr. Dennis Creekhan is going to share a message with us this morning. God bless you. It's always good to be here in Philippi. Amen. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad right. in it. And we got to. Look at the harsh, harsh two years that we've been living. COVID-19. Government shutdowns. Government intrusion into our lives. Mass mandates. Then there's shutdowns of airports. Shutdowns of businesses. People are suffering bankruptcies. Now we're suffering huge inflation. There's a war in Ukraine. Weekly shootings. Senseless shootings in our nation. We need to start taking right now a mind shift. And we need to remember who we are in Jesus Christ. This world's not our home. We're just passing through. Well, while we're passing through, we need to make sure that we leave this a better place. And if the whole world is falling apart, in which it seems like it is today, we need to stand as a sentinel of people of joy, of people of peace, of people who know and look like they worship Jesus Christ, not just on Sunday, but every day of the week. Can I hear an amen? amen. Today, I want us just to go back and remember. I want to remember the wow 
of our existence that we have in Him. Because that can be forgotten. We're living in an age, because of all the things that were mentioned this morning, an age where there's a real difficulty with people's mental health. And no wonder. You know, if they don't know Jesus, I, I don't blame them for being depressed. I don't blame people having tremendous mental health problems in this world in which we live. But we're not of the world. We live in the world, but we're not of the world. We are saved. We rejoice in who we are in Jesus Christ. And even though we have to go through all the same difficulties, we do not go through them as people without hope. We come as God's children, the elect of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who's preparing a place for us in heaven, even as we speak this very Sunday. So today I want us to remember the wow of our existence in Him. And I just want to point out some simple times where I think God just said, wow. And, and, and one of the, when I hear the term wow, and it, it just reminds me of a 1980s uh, Russian comedian named Yakov Smirnov. Anybody remember, old enough to remember him? Well, he was just enthralled with America. He came to America. He just loved walking around the cities and through our parks and through the, through the malls and the things that we have here, the abundance of what we have. And he went into a, a food store and he was walking down the aisles just amazed at the abundance of what we have. Now, it's what we had. You learn our food shelves today and you see a lot of empty shelves like you do in third world countries. But he was thrilled with what he was seeing. And he walked in and he saw, saw a, 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 the, a sign that said powdered milk. And it said just add water and powder and you get milk. And he walked down another aisle and he saw the powdered eggs. You just add water and you add, add powder and you get powdered eggs. And then he walked by another aisle and he saw baby powder. And he said, what a great country. <laughs> I just want to remember the greatness that we have in Jesus Christ. The wow of creation in Genesis 1. Can't read all that to you today, but as I know it's familiar with it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Just let that wow right over your existence this morning. That's the God who we worship today. That's the God who we serve each and every day. The God who could speak the whole existence of our universe into, into existence with just a word. And as Ginny was studying in Roanoke Bible College, and we learned it was called creation ex nihilo, from Nothing. God created everything that we see, everything that we experience from nothing. And it says, now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And boy, that's a poignant piece of information there. Because God always brings order out of chaos. God brings order out of chaos. And I thank the band for leading us in worship this morning. And there's no addictions. There's no things that we can't overcome because we know that same God of the universe. God was hovering over the spirit of God was hovering over the waters and he's speaking everything into existence from nothing. That's a major wow of our God. And then kind of the summary statement of Genesis 1 is 27 and 31. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them male and female. For you young people who are watching YouTube and listening to all the commercials and are in our school system and you are told to believe taught to believe that you can be any gender you want to be that is a lie straight from the pit of hell God created us male and he created us female God bless them and said be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit and seed in it. They will be yours for food and all the beasts of the earth and the birds of the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground. Everything that has the breath of life in it. I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw they made. It was very good. There was evening and there was morning on the sixth day. And if you go back and you look at Genesis 1, in day 1, he created light. The, the, the bring forth the, the, the sky. He brought forth on the second day. And he brought forth the, 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 the sun and the moon. And then he brought forth uh, the land on the third day. And we're not going to go through all that, but in Genesis 1.13, when he brought forth the vegetation, he says, this is good. And then when he brought the heavens, the sun and the moon, he said, this is good. And then in 121, he brought the waters and the living creatures. And he said, this is good. When God created man, when God created you, when God created me, he said, wow, this is very good. See, you are a wow of God if you see you the way God sees you. And I know we're struggling with mental health. And I know we're struggling with self-image. But I'm telling you, you are a wow of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique. You're special just the way you are. Your DNA is perfect. Your fingerprint is your own. And it can't be duplicated. It is yours given by God. Look to the person next to you and just look at them and say, Wow! Go ahead, do it. It'll make you feel better. Now, ladies, look to your husband, if you have a husband or a, or a friend, and say, wow. It's probably the first time you said that to you, is that slug husband of yours since your wedding day. Men, look to, the, look to your wife and say, wow. All right, God, I'm not hearing the guys out there. <laughs> God knows your value. Remember who you are in Jesus. God knows that you are unique and you're special. He knows you've got a special place and value to the kingdom of the Lord and his church. He knows your potential. He knows your giftedness. And he tells you that you're to shine like stars in the universe, even in a COVID world, even in a world that's falling apart because it does not know God. You are special to God and you're special to his plan. All you have to do is remember that and live it, that you are a son and daughter of the Most High God who spoke this creation into the world from nothing. Secondly, I see the well of conversion in Luke 15, 4-7. Jesus is on, always on a search and destroy mission because he came to seek and save that which was lost. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he leave the 99, the open country, and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found the lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Do you see, there was a day in my life that I was lost. I was lost as lost could be because I was outside of Jesus Christ. I was not a member of the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I was not covered by his blood. Now, I grew up going to Sunday school. Praise God, my mother took me to Sunday school and church. But then as I became a young person, a young man, I drifted away and I started to want to run with the world. I wanted to do worldly things and act like all the knuckleheads and be with the part of the world. I wanted to experience all that life had to offer, but I wanted it on my terms, not on his terms. And that life, even though we had many successes in our careers and in our personal life, there was a hole 
that was in my soul that needed to be filled. And it could only be filled by Jesus Christ. It couldn't be filled by popularity. It couldn't be filled by success, personal and professional. It couldn't be filled with money and nice houses. It couldn't be filled by being having a lot of friends and being popular. It could only be filled by Jesus. And I tell you this story not to glorify my sinful past. No, not at all. I want to show you what God can do with your life. And if you're outside of Jesus Christ, he's seeking after you this morning. And he wants to bring you into the fold of the church. And he wants to bring you in and be covered by the blood of Jesus so you can be saved. But there was a time when most people in Baltimore, just like here in Carolina, uh, you went to vacation, you went to the beach or the mountains. And most a lot of people in Baltimore would go three hours down the ocean. We called it going down the ocean. In Ocean City, Maryland. But one year, my friend Brian and Kathy said, how about we go to the Outer Banks? I said, cool, let's, let's try it. So we drove six hours down, come through Norfolk, come down through the Finger Counties, coming down from Norfolk, ride all the way through Currituck County, rode past a little town called Jarvisburg, down to the beach, and we partied. And we partied all week long. And we thought this is great. And we were drinking and we were doing marijuana. And we were thinking we were having fun. And on the way back, we drove all the way up through Currituck County, past a little town called Jarvisburg, back to Baltimore. In the very providence of God, even though I was lost in God's mind, in the plan that he had for me and my wife, Debbie, the, before the creation of the world, before he brought order out of chaos, he knew he was going to bring order out of chaos in my life. Because remember I said, I passed right by Jarvis, a little town called Jarvisburg. Well, 30 years later, God and God's providence knew I would be the evangelist of the Jarvisburg Church of Christ for 25 years, bringing people out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of God's own son. That's what God did for me. That's what he wants to do for you. All you have to say is, Lord, I am willing. I want to leave this sinful life. I am lost. I want to be found. And I need to be found by you because you bring order out of chaos. And God did just that. You see, you may be lost this morning as well. Jesus wasn't satisfied to leave me as lost. He wanted me to be in the fold. Jesus is the good shepherd. He left the glory of heaven to bring a rescue mission to find you. You were so special to God as he created you in his image and he created you for his glory that he still wants you and has a purpose for your life. You're so special to God that he sent Jesus to die on the cross. When Peter was on preaching on the day of Pentecost, there was someone just like you and me in his mind when he was giving the invitation to Israel to repent and to be baptized into Jesus Christ. God still is on a search and destroy mission. He searches for the lost because he knows they're lost and they'll never find peace without him because he brings order out of chaos and he's on a destroy uh, a mission to destroy the sinful nature that's in you to replace it with the spirit of God so that you could live in his presence and live for his glory. See, this sinful world needs more people who need Jesus. He is sending you into the world, you into Cresswell, you into Columbia to bring people out of the darkness and into the light. And that's why our world's such a mess today. The absence of light, the absence of Jesus is allowing chaos to take over our nation and our families and our culture. The only way we're going to get it back is if Jesus finds the lost and makes them whole. And when you're found and you're brought back to Jesus, God just says, wow. And the angels in heaven rejoice. There's a glorious celebration in heaven every time a baptism takes place. 
and that lost one is found. And now he's saying, wow. He's saying, well, look at all the people who have come out of the world. Look at all the people who have come to church this morning. God's looking down on you this morning. You may have walked in here half asleep, but God's saying, wow, they love my son, Jesus. And I'm preparing a table for them. I'm preparing a worship service for them. And I'm allowing them to come into my presence to bring glory to the Father, glory to the Spirit, and glory to Jesus Christ. Finally says, I see the wow of confident faith. Thirdly, in Matthew 8, 5, and it's the story of the centurion, this Roman army official who's in Israel. And God looks at him and he just says, wow, all of Israel, I can't see this faith, but I see it in him. And Jesus entered Capernaum, that was his northern base up in Galilee, because the Sadducees and Pharisees are trying to kill Jesus, they're trying to arrest him. So he said, okay, I'll take my ministry up north for a while, because it's not my time. He enters Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? Centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, my servant will be healed. For I myself am man under authority and soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, one, one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. That's a shocking statement. I haven't found anyone in Israel, not the high priest, not the priest, not the Levites, not the ones drifting in and out of the temple all week long, didn't find one with such faith. He says, I say to you, many will come from east and west and take their places at the feast of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of, che- to gnashing of teeth. When Jesus said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And the servant was healed at that moment. It was a wow of glory. But it was a wow that tells you that religion isn't going to cut it. The Jews had religion, but they didn't see the Messiah. They had the tradition of of temple worship, but the temple worship and the blood of bulls and goats was pointing them to Jesus. And Jesus is in their midst and they didn't see him. They didn't recognize him. Jesus may be in your midst. You may come to church, but you've never been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. You've never been given water that gushes out of you like bubbling water of the spirit. You can go to church but not be thrilled and making God a wow of your life. God's amazed when people do great things in his name. He was amazed at this centurion. Jesus saw the faith of the centurion and amazed him. The Jews had the law. The Jews had the prophets. But they they missed the Messiah. I never want you to make that mistake. What we need to bring order out of chaos into our lives is... Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Many in Jerusalem miss the wow of their faith. Don't make that same mistake today. Remember your beginning. Remember your heritage. God has wow, God has been wowed by your faith here at Philippi for many, many years since the inception of this church. And I think it was September 18, 1873, that the first deed of this church was kind of noted. And there was a purchase of three quarters of an acre in Cherry, North Carolina for $20. That's a good deal. (laughs) The first discussion of the building uh, uh, um, and the the old auditorium over there was in 1906 and work completed that in 1910. 
You know, that's not too far coming out of uh, the, the uh, difficult financial times. In 1946, three quarters of an acre was per purchased for 125 bucks. <laughs> In 1963, another quarter acre adjacent to the cemetery was purchased for a dollar. 1964, you purchased, well, you didn't, but the people of your past uh, built, uh, they had another half acre purchased for $10. So a total of $156 did all that. Hey, big spender. <laughs> in, 19, um, in 1973, the fellowship hall was added over there. In 1983, four acres were purchased across the road over on this side. Then another four acres in the house in 1989 for 45000 Another 2.7 acres was purchased for 6500 6, for a total of 13 acres here in Questwell, dedicated unto God. I say that's a great wow, don't you? 2001, uh, the, you built the Family Life Center. What a big stretch for people in Cresswell, North Carolina, to have vision that we want to have a place where we can have activities for young people and families that we can maybe expand and have another worship service. And that took place in 2012 when your contemporary worship service began and allowed all of this area to come and worship in a style that they're comfortable with. Traditional service and modern service with contemporary ideas. Jesus at the core of it all, but different, different styles. Then you had, over the years, 12 students who went to Bible college, three men dedicated in ministry, two serving today in, in, in Ireland. Can you say, wow? That's a great wow. What's happened here? Because people loved the Lord. People knew that the Lord was the pinnacle of their existence. And they shared what they had. And that brings us to the last wow. The wow of generosity. Matthew I mean, Mark 12, 41 to 44. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were. He's in the temple precinct. He's watching the show of all the rich people bringing their money and banging and clanging and, and uh, making a big show of what they're giving. Sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and they watched the crowd putting their money in the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth two cents. Could probably have bought another two acres back in 1863. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty put in everything, all that she had to live on. And what that just tells me is Jesus notices sacrificial giving and it wows him. He wasn't wow with the big show to, to just bring honor and glory to the person. He was wowed as the person who knew the value of giving to God and be willing to give it all for the glory of God. God has noticed how throughout the history of this church that you have been a people who have denied yourself for the good of the kingdom. Who have given over and over for special causes, for buildings that other people could come out of their lostness into the grace of our Lord and Savior. God notices generosity. And He blesses. That's why He says it's more Pre bless, bless, more precious to give than to receive. And we know that, and you know, like at Christmas time. You know, I don't need another pair of socks or underwear or slippers. But boy, I love giving to my daughter and giving to my wife. It's, but we know it's more blessed to give than to receive. So that's a foundational principle of God. That generosity is noticed and wowed by God. The greatest thing that I would teach my daughter Olivia, other than to come to Jesus as Lord and Savior, was to teach her the principle of the tithe. That if she would love God with all her heart, mind, soul, and strength, and if she would 
dedicate just a, a, a tenth, a starting place of her income to the Lord. She could live, no matter what the economy is, she could live knowing that she's living in the favor of God and that God would bless her and he would multiply those gifts and he would care for her because she's a child of God and God cares for his own. You cannot outgive God. He loves a cheerful giver and he adds his favor to your sacrifice. He notices when you tithe. He notices when you sacrifice. And he loves that. And he loves it not for the gift, the little clanging gift. He loves it because you trust him. And you're willing to sacrifice for the good of Cresswell, for the good of Columbia, for the good... What, what the heck county is this? Washington. Why is Washington County? Washington County should be where Washington is. Don't you think? I'm just a dummy from Baltimore. I can't, I can't figure these things out. But, but I know God in a down economy is wowed by how churches have given. And I've been amazed during this pandemic when churches weren't even meeting. You know, most churches, income never went down. When they stopped taking up the offering and put it in a bucket or a plate, you know, income went up. How do you figure that? It's figured because people who have been changed by God are going to give no matter how they give it, you know? And friends, the biggest wow is still ahead of us. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die and whoever lives and lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? I do. Do you believe that? I'm never going to die. Oh, my body's going to cease. I mean, most Crehans don't. There hasn't been a Crehan man that made it to 70. And I'm chugging along, baby. I'll be 70 in March. And I told Debbie, I want to at least make it to 71 to be the oldest living Crehan male. <laughs> but Lord, if you take me right now, I'm cool with it. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Can you say, wow? wow? Heaven is being prepared for you. God is going to one day allow us through death. Death's nothing to fear. Death is just the portal. It's the, it's the way God's going to take us from this existence into his presence. And if you know Jesus, if you will only give your life to him, and let your life be a wow for his name. He's waiting for you. And you'll live eternally with him in the very presence of our God. And I'm just imploring you as the elders and as the leaders and as the members of this church. Keep on doing what you're doing. Because God is wowed by what's happened in the past. He's wowed by what happened 20 years ago. He's wowed by what's happening now. And he can't wait to see what your children and your grandchildren do in his name in a cancel culture that hates Christianity. But the church will thrive in Cresswell, North Carolina. Because you stick to the truth of God's word. You hold on to biblical truths. And he's wowed by what you do. And if you need Jesus this morning, we're giving you that invitation right now. If you don't have him as Lord and Savior, if you've never confessed his name, if you've never been baptized into his name, what a great day to get that done. Amen. I don't care. Is there a baptistry in here or is it over there? There's a baptistry right there. You see that? That's right there. We'll pop that lid off that thing and we'll get you taken care of. So come, this is your invitation. It's your invitation time. Come to Jesus. You need prayer? Come. Face an illness? Come. We've got elders to lay hands on you. Lord, you will go and pray. You just need a hug? Come. I'll hug you. I'm fully, I'm fully vaccinated. I feel like a dog just going to the vet. If you need Jesus, come your invitation. Come.
We sing this beautiful song. What we say? Oh, draw me clever. Good. Perfect. I didn't even tell him what I was preaching. Draw me close. Said, stand and sing. Come to Jesus. He's much older than me. <laughs> so you Way know, older. I, I want to be able to go home and, and live peacefully. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> well, when Dennis was talking about looking at your husband and saying, wow, look over at Nicole, and she was laughing. <laughs> nah, I don't know about all that. But, uh, we'd like to thank Brother Dennis for a very fine message and uh, really thank him for being here with us today. And uh, good to see all of you. 
And uh, it's been a wonderful blessing to be here in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'd like to uh, encourage you all to uh, continue to pray for each other, continue to support each other in this world that we live in. It is a sinful world, but uh, through Jesus, we'll get through it, won't we? Uh, if there's nothing, any more announcement, any announcements at all, anybody uh, need to make before we close? VBS is coming up. VBS is coming up in August, I'm sure the week. Oh, uh, do what? Zemer's game. game is going to be the, the last weekend in June, I think. There's a kid um, tie-dye Kid tie-dye knot. Oh, okay. That's, that's way too much information. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions, see Lydia about the tie-dye stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, very good. Thank you. Um, at, you know, I'm an elder, but most of the time I really don't know what's going on. Right now. <laughs> uh, you need to ask other people. Okay, uh, once again, thank you all for being here. Let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for this, uh, this, this beautiful Lord's Day. We can gather together here in your house and hear your word spoken to us. Father, we thank you for the message today and, and for what it means to us. Father, may we take this message out now into the world. May we shine for Christ. May others see the light and the love of Jesus in us. And may we win souls to you, Father to bring them home to Christ, Father. Please guide us in that, direct us, and forgive us, Father, when we fail you. We praise you, we love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.